organized, organ and organized uh, invasion of another sovereign country. Uh, so President Obama answers to the question about this regime change. He says, uh, I was told to do this by the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, he says, you see, uh, I don't really make significant decisions in the White House. <laughs> Plus, Hillary, speaking of Hillary Clinton, she wouldn't shut up about it. And the Muslim Street then asked, uh, Mr. President, uh, we at the Street uh, recall statements from your speech in Cairo uh, to the Muslim world when you took office. Uh, and, and, you were studiously, and you studiously discussed the history of America and the overthrow of Muslim leaders and the subsequent placing of puppet governments in, uh, uh, who, were, who were quote unquote intolerable to American policy. And in fact, you specifically mentioned, Mr. President, the CIA's ouster of Prime Minister Mohammed Mossadegh of Iran in 1953 by the Ike Eisenhower administration. Why is your administration doing the exact same thing? Uh, we, we saw the Bush administration uh, go on this tangent of regime change, uh, which led to the hanging of uh, Saddam Hussein on one of the, uh, the Muslim holidays, the Eid al Kabir. Uh, we saw uh, the uh, placing of a public government in Afghanistan. We saw the United States under the Bush administration engage in a, uh, a war by proxy through Ethiopia and Somalia that was kept, kept on the hush-hush. It was in 2007, May of 2007, that I led a, 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 a group of 23 uh, uh, progressive African Americans to the Sudan. The Sudan was under threat by the United States as a takeover target. Then they started doing the Clinton administration in the mid-1990s, uh, and you would never find this stuff on CNN. You would never find this stuff on Fox News. You would find it in these types of discussions that have to take place with progressive thinking and right-minded people. You have to dig for this kind of research, and then you have to tell it from the mountaintop. In 1995, uh, in Sudan, and I use Sudan as a case study for what is going on in Libya today. These carbon, it doesn't take, I mean, these are cookie cutter, uh, carbon copy, overthrow of governments. And, and we can talk about it in history, uh, you know, in the 1950s and 1960s, when the move was against Asian countries, we can talk about it in the 1970s and the 1980s under the uh, uh, the in the 1980s under the Reagan administration, when the, on the onslaught went down to Central and South America, the Sandinistas. We can we can continue to talk about that stuff, but all of these cookie cutter uh, overthrow of governments, uh, the Sudan in 19 in 2007, the framework was dropped in that. And in 1995, when the Sudanese said to the United States oil interest there, Chevron in particular, get out. They had been there since 1972, 1973, where they found oil in the Sudan. Uh, they tapped the oil, wouldn't put it on the, uh, the international marketplace in, in terms of control and price. This is a big game that they play. They told them to get out in 1995 uh, under the Clinton administration, and they wrote them a big check. Watch, at that particular time, uh, the uh, United States government under Clinton and his foreign policy begin to change towards Sudan. We saw before Clinton left office, what? The bombing of, uh, of, of the capital of uh, Sudan under this uh, 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 guise that they were trying to uh, you know, kill Bin Laden. And what did they do? They bombed Khartoum, killed innocent uh, men, women, and children in the city of uh, Khartoum. And uh, there, there you had the, um, the, the same, again, this carbon copy uh, essentiality that take place. Um, when Chevron was kicked out, <coughs> uh, the Sudanese uh, government invited uh, the Malaysians in for a play on the oil. They invited the Chinese in for a play on the oil. They took 50% of the oil uh, contracts uh, with, with the Chinese uh, controlling uh, the other 50% and the Malaysians for a small piece. You might say, how do I know all this? I'm going to tell you because I sat at the table with the largest oil refinery in the Sudan with the Chinese and with the Sudanese government, right? And I looked at the contracts. I saw it with my own eyes, and I saw an eyewitness report of what was negotiated. The, uh, so here, as we see the Sudan being a, um, a carbon copy backdrop of a failed invasion, because that invasion was called off, and I'm going to talk about the reasons why it was called off uh, under the Bush administration. And you remember, 
that Barack Obama, when he, uh, when he took office, he said that he would continue what? I will continue George Bush's war on terror, which is a cold word, word for a cold term of the United States policy, a foreign policy of war against Islam, the war against Muslim lands, and war against Muslim resources. Make no mistake about it. He said that he would continue. I say it. He ran as a progressive president, an, ideal, an ideologue. Gave up his idealism for what? American pragmatism. One out. And uh, this is a decision that he made, I didn't make it. I will say this, uh, that getting back to the uh, Sudan as a case study for a success, uh, if you will, and it wasn't much of a success, but a success to stop an invasion. Uh, while I was there uh, for a, a long period of time doing a fact-finding mission on what happened in Darfur, and the lies that were being spread by the Western press on that, that there was genocide taking place in Darfur. So, so I went there to do the, the necessary groundwork and the research to come up with my own facts. Turn off CNN. This is garbage. Turn off Fox News. More garbage. More of the same. MSNBC, more, more garbage. <laughs> so we have to uh, begin this independent study and research and, and finding ways and vehicles to disseminate that in information to the masses of the people, causing them become more aware and more conscious and take action uh, on grassroots levels to, to make changes under the conditions in which we live. And, and this is the blueprint for how to do that. Get up off your butts, stop going down to Jamaica, spending your money on cruises and stuff like that. Go to Africa, go to the hot spots in the Middle East, go on the ground and do your own independent study if you want to make a change. If you don't, continue to live in this la-la land and this, this land of materialism that, that most people have been caught up into. And you will see yourself and your lives pass by and you will not make the change. But I have faith that this generation will continue uh, to make change. So getting back to the case study, what came out of this exposition of this small group of African Americans, the Dar 423, which when I went to Sudan, I called on the banks of the Nile River a call for, to politicize these 23 African Americans who were doing a fact-finding mission, mission in Darfur to find out what the real reasons were. And I politicized immediately on day one of that trip. Why? Why did I politicize it? Because I knew that there was a bigger issue that, had, that was facing not only the Sudan, but it needed to be a framework for how we would deal with and create the struggle moving forward in relationship to American expansion vis-a-vis -vis, uh, their losing the ground of oil and resources in Africa and the Middle East. What could the small grassroots people do to make a difference? <clears throat> so here we have 23 uh, people, men, women, different races uh, who find themselves meeting with the rebel leaders, rebel leaders in uh, uh, Darfur, find ourselves meeting with the vice president, the then vice president of the South, who is now the, the, uh, the president of the South, uh, of a new country called the Southern Sudan. We find ourselves meeting with the, the president of San Omar Hassan el-Bashir, asking the tough, the tough questions in order to get the facts about the situation. And while we were meeting with them, at the very same instance that we were meeting uh, with these uh, men and women of big affairs in, in Sudan, Charles Rangel, a lifetime politician out of New York since 1971, 1972. Uh, also Bobby Rush, former Black Panther, now sellout. Took a million dollars from AT&T. I don't know how true it was, don't, don't quote me on that, but I got it on pretty much black and white. Uh, in 2006, took a million dollars from uh, AT&T, another lifetime politician out of Chicago, in the Congress. Mm -hmm. Met with George Bush, their political adversary, where they have nothing in common with politically. On the, on the, on the grass of the White House lawns, while we were meeting with the President of Sudan. And they were cutting a deal to put more sanctions on an independent African state. What, what kind of sense is this? It just doesn't make sense to me. Why then when, when these uh, uh, two congressmen, lifetime uh, uh, politicians with budgets bigger than the budgets we had, right? Why wouldn't they do what we were doing? Why wouldn't they go to the sources?